Happy Tuesday, all of you amazing people online today. I hope that you are having a fantabulous day so far. Um, it's at 11 o'clock Eastern here where I am, but you all have let me know. Some of you are tuning in from California, some of you from Arizona. So if you are on right now live, I appreciate you so much for getting up and tuning in with me. Um, I am very excited about today's topic. If you already follow me online, you know that we are six days away from the launch of the Tax Pros representation journey, um, which also happens to be my 34th birthday. Um, hi, Miss Dorothy. How are you doing on today? Thanks for hopping on with me. Um, like I was saying, we have six days till that official launch. Today, I'm going to actually um, let you all know what the bonuses are. So last week, I asked you all, should I do something special for the first 34 people that sign up? And you all said yes. <laughs> and I even got some messages and people that saw the replay that also said yes. So I decided that I'm going to give two bonuses to the first 34 people that sign up. And before I even had the opportunity to say what the bonuses were, last week, people started signing up. Um, somebody even signed up yesterday. So that has me very excited about it. I was telling my husband, this is the first birthday that I have been excited about since I turned 21, I think. And, you know, it's crazy, kind of nerdy, but it's all because of being an EA, right? And I'm going to get to hang out with the people that are participating in the tax pros representation journey. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't even know who I am, let me get that way. Let me get the introduction out of the way. So my name is Timelyn Bowens and I am America's favorite EA. And as an enrolled agent, I am licensed to represent taxpayers before the IRS. So I'm also the owner of Bowens Tax Solutions, which is a virtual firm based in Louisville, Kentucky, and we specialize in stepping in taxpayer shoes to handle their IRS issues for them. So typically, I work with people that owe at least $100,000 or more, um, or they're actively being audited, or their bank account um, or paycheck is being levied, garnished. So that means IRS is going in their bank account or taking part of their paycheck as they're getting paid. So that's who I work with primarily. On Tuesdays, I've been going live because one of the things that is very important to me is mentorship. I would not be where I'm at in life, in my career, if I did not have some of the amazing mentors that I have and people pouring into my life. So for about the past four years now, I've had other enrolled agents reaching out to me like, hey, I saw you speak here. Do you have a program? Hey, I'm associated with you in this group. Do you have a program? And it's always been no, no, no. So the timing just wasn't right. And quite frankly, I was running from that. Um, but some things have changed within the past 12 months. And again, I am so excited about the launch on next Monday, September 18th. Um, so it is going to be a private podcast, an article subscription. So each week you are going to have me in your ear and your inbox giving you guidance um, to help you become the EA that you actually want to be. All right. Because after you pass the EA exam, you may have goals that you want to reach, but you don't know how to get there. So I made a post yesterday and it compared a roadmap to a GPS. Yes, it's great to have a map. But when you actually have that GPS, you have those real time updates and somebody to tell you when there's a bump up ahead and you should go right instead of left. All right. But as you can tell, I'm excited about tomorrow. Um, let's dig into today's topic, because if you follow me, you know that I didn't always know what an enrolled agent or EA was. Right. So there are many students in accounting that have no idea what an EA is. There are some tax professionals even who they may have heard of the credential, but they don't actually know what it is. So today we're going to talk about. Briefly, 
what an enrolled agent is. For those of you on here with me that are EAs, I want to talk about how did you get here? What made you choose the enrolled agent career path? Then I want to talk about who's keeping you accountable with that. Now, I got so overly excited, I forgot to share this to my personal page. So I'm going to do that for my folks on Facebook. Because unfortunately, looking at Facebook, I have about 500 followers on the America's Favorite EA page, but 5,700 on my personal page. So I just want to make sure nobody's missing out on the fun, right? And Miss Dorothy, if you are still on or whoever is on, let me know if you all can hear me okay. Because you all know I'm not going to forgive you yet for that incident a couple of weeks ago where you all let me talk for five minutes and you couldn't hear me. All right. So I have that shared. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. She said she can hear me. Hey, Brandon, thanks for tuning in. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know Brandon, Brandon just recently passed part three, or I don't know if it was actually part three. You tell me, Brandon. So if you haven't taken the EA exam, you wouldn't know this, but there are three parts to the exam. You can take them in whatever order you want to. And Brandon recently passed I don't know if it was the third one, but the third one that he decided to take, he passed that. So he should be getting his certificate soon. He's a brand, brand spanking new EA. So yes, he passed all three parts. Awesome. Now over here, cause you guys know I can't see my LinkedIn comments. I'm just going to pull up LinkedIn to make sure I can see this over here. Because sometimes on here, it pops up as like LinkedIn user. I can't see who it is. But I appreciate you all, LinkedIn family. They let me know in my DMs. Because usually they're the ones that are really with me, right? They let me know that, hey, we're at work. Uh-oh. It's good because I can hear myself. All right. So on LinkedIn, they let me know like, hey, we are with you but we're working so we can't always type in the chat so Camille, thank you for hopping on good morning to you as well now there are several other people over here on linkedin because i actually can see i have more people on linkedin than i do on facebook they're not saying anything yet but i will give them a little bit of grace because they already let me know that most of the time they're at work but if you can don't want to get you in trouble at work just pop in and say good morning all right so first things first, and this is going to be interactive because if you've ever seen me teach in person, you know, I walk around the room and I ask people questions, right? So same way online. I want you guys input on this. So I've talked about why I chose this career path. Um, last week, I talked about why I chose to become an enrolled agent versus a CPA. And I talked about why I chose to do that first. So disclaimer i'm not about to set out a diss track for cpas right because there are a lot of cpas that i have a lot of respect for however because of what was going on in my life and because i don't believe in wasting time or money or effort i wanted to be the best in tax i wanted to specialize in tax Majority of the CPA exam does not even cover tax. So for me, logically, I said, hey, becoming an enrolled agent, receiving the highest credential that the IRS awards in this field of tax, that makes more sense for me in my career path right now. The way my life is set up at this moment, will I be sitting for the CPA exam anytime soon? Probably not. Now, if the opportunity presents itself, that is something that I do want to sit for. And like I said um, last week, do I need to get the CPA license to represent tax clients? No, it's a personal thing for me because last time the stats were done, less than 4% of all CPAs were black. So again, 
Is it going to make me more proficient at my job with tax representation? No, but for me, it's personal. So that's why I plan, if the opportunity presents itself, to sit for that exam. Thank you, Brandon. So he passed all three parts. When you get your certificate, you have to make sure, of course, cross out your EA number. But we want to see your certificate. So we most definitely can congratulate you on passing all three parts of that exam because that is awesome. I don't know if you saw my post earlier in the month. So September 1st was my anniversary of passing my third uh, the special enrollment exam, part number three. And I still remember being so excited <laughs> watching that um, paper come off the printer because I knew it. I knew how I passed it. So I know you recently passed. I hope that you are still living in the hype because it is a big accomplishment. And I look forward to everything that you're going to be doing as an EA. Karina, she says, good morning. Good morning to you too. Now, let me remember, Karina, you are tuning in from Florida, right? Just let me know. But I told you all this morning, I'm excited, okay? So <laughs> I'm excited about the launch next week, but I'm also excited to talk about this. So like I just said, for me, logically, it made more sense at that time for me to get my EA license versus a CPA license. Nothing against it, but we know, and if you don't, you can go check out my video, EA versus CPA, that EA specialize in taxes. CPAs have the opportunity to specialize in taxes, but that test does not test their proficiency in taxes. It's more accounting standards like GAP, IFRS, different processes is for internal auditing, those types of things. While those things are important, it's just not what I wanted to specialize in, right? So Brandon says, definitely saw your post. I'll post mine as well when it gets here. Hey, awesome. I will definitely be on the lookout for it. So for those of you that are EAs, um, even if you have not received that certificate yet, right, Brandon? Or even if you haven't started sitting for the exam yet, what is your reason for wanting to be an EA? All right. So I just... I gave you my reason for why I chose it over the CPA license, but if I dig in a little further, um, a couple of weeks ago, you know, you all told me I was on here preaching. Y'all even threw some money into the little offering plate, right, with the stars on Facebook. But I was talking about my why, and the reason I wanted to do this is because tax planning is very important. Um, it helps reduce taxpayers' liabilities, helps them be proactive and kind of choose, honestly, choose what their liability is going to be because there's a lot of things that can be implemented there. That's what I thought I wanted to go into. After working in public accounting, I said, you know what? I want to help these high, high net earners and I want to help them reduce their tax liability, be one of the best tax planners. But for me, it's cool. It's like putting a puzzle together. It was not as fulfilling, right? So if you listen to my podcast, the Tax Relief with Tim and Bones podcast, I always say that I'm on a mission to fill the tax literacy gap one taxpayer at a time. So for me, becoming an EA, I was making more of an impact being able to step into a taxpayer's shoes and represent them before the IRS. Because, yeah, you lower somebody's tax liability, they're grateful, but it's not the same kind of appreciation as someone who is possibly going to lose their marriage because of tax debt, right? It's not the same as somebody who can't buy a home because of a tax debt or they can't sell a home because of a tax debt because there's a lien there. It's not the same as somebody getting $15, $2,500 taken from their paycheck every other week coming to you for help and you can go right to the IRS and take care of that. And you know what? For you all that are interested in tax planning, maybe it is the same for you, 
But for me, becoming an EA made an even bigger impact. And like I talked about last week, I made a shameless plug for NAEA. Another thing that you get to do as an enrolled agent, you get to advocate for the taxpayer, not only on their behalf in front of the IRS, like when you're handling their case. I had the opportunity to actually speak with the IRS as part of a focus group to give feedback about how I think it was the 2021 tax season went right? Maybe it was 2020. It was sometime during the pandemic because it's kind of all a blur with all the changes we had, right? But they actually took the time to listen to what we had to say about how it was affecting our clients, how it was affecting our practices. And I honestly, you know, they do different focus groups, but I know that opportunity was afforded to me because I'm an enrolled agent, right? Um, Again, with NAEA, there is a fly-in day every year where we get to go to the Capitol and advocate for taxpayers to the lawmakers, the people who are making the tax law, right? For me, being an enrolled agent makes a bigger impact and it all aligns with my goal of filling the tax literacy gap one taxpayer at a time. So let me look over here at LinkedIn. All right, so LinkedIn, I know you all said you're working, And I'm not supposed to take it personal. We're not beefing or anything. But there is a significant amount of people over here on LinkedIn compared to Facebook. And you all are, y'all are quiet as a mouse. So like, can I get a thumbs up? Can I get a heart? Just so I know that you guys are still listening. Now, if your boss is in the room and, you know, they're walking by and you're trying not to get in trouble, that's cool. But just let me know you're here because I see there's more than just Camille on there and there's more than Karina on there. All right. So say something back to me because I asked you all about your why you decided to do this and become an enrolled agent. Um, the next part is why did you choose this path? So I already got into it a little bit for me. I wanted to make a bigger impact. Thank you, Camille. She waved. See, that's that's all I'm asking for, y'all. That's all I'm asking for. And thank you, Karina. You are in Florida. I hope that it's not too muggy and humid down there right now. But for me, it was about making that bigger impact. That is why I wanted to be the EA, to be able to advocate for those taxpayers whether I'm looking forward to fly in day next year. I didn't get to participate this year because um, the weekend of fly in day, I was in Nashville. I was taking care of something else that weekend. But having the opportunity to actually sit in the room with the people that affect tax laws here in Kentucky that are going to have input to affect federal tax laws. Guys, that is huge. And I don't think that we realize the power that we actually have as enrolled agents to advocate on behalf of the taxpayer, like I said, at Capitol Hill, or just by representing them before the IRS. Like you have the same authority as an attorney when it comes to representing them before the IRS. Now, you can't go to tax court. You do have to, you know, get some tax attorneys in your network to help you out with that and build a referral network. But you have so much power within your credential. All right, so somebody woke up and is participating. Thank you, Karina. Look, guys, you get in what you put in, just putting it out there. So Karina says, I wanna become an enrolled agent because I wanna focus on tax and the EA gives me more options within the tax field. I. I do agree with that. Um, I was going to ask you a question, but I'll I'll send you a message. I won't put you on full blast right there. So awesome. I think it does give you more options within tax. Now within the accounting industry, I was asked this last week, I think because CPA, that license is more widely recognized. So and really all it is is lobbying money. Um, people have the opportunity, it's more recognized, but it's crazy how many people don't know 
that all CPAs don't do taxes. You guys, I have cleaned up so many CPA messes. And again, disclaimer that this is not a bash session because I have cleaned up so many EA tax messes too. But the client had no idea that they were going to be headed for a mess because they trusted that CPA license to be able to take care of them because it's not communicated what I just told you all like EAs, enrolled agent, that's the highest license that the IRS awards people. CPAs is a very rigorous test, but it's something administered by the state. It does not deal with just tax stuff. So that is something that is on us as well. While you're advocating for the client, you also have to make sure that you are educating taxpayers as to what it is that you can do and assist them with. Camille says, I knew I wanted to help people in a more impactful way. I think I'm now discovering how best, how to best impact them between tax resolution and tax planning. Absolutely, because here's the thing. The majority of people, after they have a tax issue, they don't want to go back, right? So it gives you the perfect opportunity if you're going to do tax planning as well to then be able to show them like here is a better way to make sure that you never end up here again. Now, as for me and myself, sometimes I have shiny object syndrome, right? Excuse me. And I want to take all the tax classes, learn all the different tax things. But what I have learned and am learning in my practice is that I am focusing on one thing. So for me personally, I am no longer taking any new tax prep clients. Um, after this extension deadline, I'm going to be sending out some introduction emails because I'm going to be offboarding some people. Not that they did anything wrong. I just know that that is not my focus anymore. And I am doing them a disservice because there's another group that I want to focus on and help. And that is working with other EAs and then also doing the tax representation. I don't want to do tax planning anymore, right? So Miss Dorothy says, I wanted to offer more than bookkeeping and tax preparation for my clients. Awesome. Yeah, because when you have a prospect that is new for bookkeeping, usually they come to you and their books are a mess, right? And if you have a client, taxpayer whose books are a mess, they haven't been able to predict accurately what their tax bill is going to look like. If they haven't been able to predict that, that means they probably didn't set enough money aside, which means they're probably going to have a bill they didn't anticipate. And that's for people that are actually making money. I'm not talking about the people that start the LLC just so they could write everything off. I'm not talking about them today. I'm talking about legitimate business owners who are out here trying to make money, books a mess. Again, that's a perfect funnel. Once you get them straightened out, now you can offer them bookkeeping and tax preparation and even tax planning, Ms. Dorothy. And as an EA, what are we authorized to do? Represent clients before the IRS offer tax planning and do the tax preparation. So looks like you all pick some good career paths. But when we're looking at why, and I, I like the commonality that we have here. Everybody has said, well, Karina's wasn't as direct, but for the most part, you wanted to be able to offer more, right? You didn't want to be in this box because Karina said she wanted to have more options within the tax field. Camille wanted to be able to offer them more and have a, the best impact between tax resolution and planning. Miss Dorothy wanted to offer more than bookkeeping and tax preparation. Being an enrolled agent allows us to be of more service to taxpayers. Somebody is blowing my phone up. Hang on a minute. Because I think somebody yes. So I'll share this guys. I'll share this with you guys because it's not in the comments, it's in my inbox, but it is somebody listening right now. So 
Hey, person listening right now, I can see their name, but since it's in my inbox, I won't won't put them out there like that. But this person says, hi, listening in right now. I agree with Dorothy. I'm looking to increase my service offerings. Cool, cool, cool. So again, we're choosing the enrolled agent path to be of more service to our clients. So with that, my new EAs, my folks in my inbox over here, uh, I have folks in my inbox on Facebook and LinkedIn. Y'all drop on down in the comments. Well, no, because I guess then there will be proof that you weren't working while you were listening, right? While you're doing this and you're going to be of more service to other people, it is very important to understand that while you are serving people, you have to have something to give them, right? So three weeks ago, maybe, maybe it was two weeks ago, um, when everybody told me I was preaching and putting money in the offering plate, the stars in the offering plate, I talked about the one of two mistakes that every enrolled agent makes. And just a very quick recap, those two mistakes, one is as soon as they pass the EA exam, they go out, they do all this marketing, they tell people how they can help them, and they think that after they pass that enrolled agent exam, that's it. There's no further education. They are America's tax expert. They have the highest credential awarded, but there's actually more to it than that. You have to get your continuing education every year because the tax laws are changing every single year. And that's not only within tax preparation, it's not only within tax planning, but if you've been paying attention, the tax laws within tax representation are changing as well. We have a little bit more leniency. Um, the IRS is catching up with technology. So when I first became an EA, you had to fax over that 2848. Now you can upload them online. There are all kinds of things that are evolving. So it's very important, especially if you were going to hold yourself out as the expert, that you are staying on top of those tax law changes because now not only are you representing yourself when you're out here as an enrolled agent, you have all of your clients that you have power of attorney for on your shoulders, right? So while you're out here doing all this, you have to make sure that you have some continuing education that's being poured into you. In addition to having that continuing education, the second mistake that I said people made was they only go out and they get all this continuing education, but then they don't do anything with it. And I was like, you study for the exam, you pass this exam, have this amazing license, then you don't actually help anybody. So why do you have the license then if you're not gonna go out and help anybody? And what it is, is all fear, right? We get stuck with analysis paralysis. You got all the CE, you got your 72 hours of CE all in one year. You've seen how to do the work, but you're not putting the work to work. All right. And that, again, you can't pour in and start doing the work if you're not being filled up with a community to keep you accountable. That is is the main thing that I have been pushing. Now, not today, I don't see anybody, but I can promise you each week that I've been going live, there are people within my community that have been like, hey, that was a good video, or I got to tune on late or tune in late. I saw the replay. I have people within my EA community, within my tax community, some of them are CPAs, some of them are not credentialed, that are supporting what I do whether it's working with taxpayers or if it's working with other enrolled agents. I need you guys to realize that just passing the exam isn't enough. I need you to realize that getting all the CE in the world isn't enough. You have to find a nice balance between the two to make sure that your mindset is right. You know that you know this stuff. I don't know why I'm popular today, you guys. I'm sorry. 
You have to know that you know this stuff to be able to move forward, to actually pour into your clients, to educate them and to be able to represent them. And the best way to do that is to find your tribe. Now, yes, I'm going to tell you about the tax pros representation journey, but the same thing I say on my podcast to taxpayers, it doesn't have to be me, but get the help you need. All right, because some communities are going to be paid communities and then some communities are going to be people that you just met at a tax conference, whether that be online or in person. They're going to be people that you vibe with. But remember that in this industry, the only thing you have other than your license is your name and your reputation. You can't go out just connecting with everybody because let's say you go connect with somebody who's really popular on social media. They're just giving sound bites. You know that the stuff isn't accurate. They get exposed as a fraud. Guess who's going to go down as a fraud with them? There's a lag. I'll give you the answer. It's going to be you. You have to make sure that whoever you are associating with is somebody that has integrity all right a big part of what we do especially if you've ever looked at circular 230 if you are an enrolled agent i pray you've looked at circular 230 this is something all based on ethics right make sure that you're not getting in bed with folks that are fraudulent i mean there's no nice way for me to put that you want to make sure these people have integrity you want to make sure that they have goals and vision that aligns with yours does that mean that it has to be the exact same thing absolutely not i'll give you an example i have we'll call them tax sisters right even though we're all eas none of us are going in the same direction None of us. However, we share our goals with each other. We let each other know about new opportunities that we have. And guess what happens when I have a day where I don't feel like working toward my goal? My tax sisters come in and they pick me up and remind me of my why, my purpose, and they give me the push I need to keep going. Now, is that every single time? No, you wanna make sure that you also have people in your tribe that are going to have balance because there's a such thing as burnout and it takes years to recover from burnout, not just a few days. So yes, sometimes my tax sisters say, shut your laptop, go to bed, all right? But then when I need it most, they are there to remind me like, hey, this is what you said you wanna do you've got this, you're the best person equipped for this, go do it, stop making excuses, go do it. Now, how many people actually have somebody like that in their tribe right now? Let me go check out my LinkedIn people. <laughs> LinkedIn and Facebook, let me catch you all up because I got messages on both. All right. What? Y'all's bosses must be in the room. Well, somebody, again, I won't tell since you all are in my DMs. On Facebook, I'm seeing, yes, I have those people in my tribe. No, I do not have those people in my tribe. No, I don't have a tribe. All right, so thank you, Karina. Karina says not within the tax and accounting industry, not within tax and accounting, but in another industry. And you know, Karina, that is perfectly fine because here's the thing. Sometimes when we only partner with people that are doing exactly what we're doing, we only think within a certain box, right? So for example, let's say that you are a woman right? It is fine to partner with other 
woman business owners, if you are a business owner, because you all are going to go through similar things that they're going to be able to help you with to keep you accountable. If you are in the tax industry and you are a mom and a wife, not your complete tribe, but you need some folks in your tribe that are moms and that are wives, because with those common grounds, they will help push you forward because even though you may not have the same day-to-day -day experience, those experiences that you do share on your bad days, they're going to be able to push you through and vice versa. Now, Dorothy says that she also has a tribe. I'm sorry, you all. See, I got to fussing and maybe there's just a lag. So new LinkedIn message says, I don't have a community yet. So Again, I'm going to tell you all about the tax pro representation journey, but what I would also suggest that you do, go find, and it sounds cliche, but go find like-minded people at that tax conference on that webinar. Now, social media is nice because, you know, you can kind of check people out, make sure they're not a little crazy before you send that connection, but build community that way. Now, if I don't have any other questions, um, I have some people on here that I've worked with. I have some people on here that I've had phone calls with. I even have some people on here on LinkedIn and Facebook that have already subscribed to the subscription. But I want to tell you all about the Tax Pros representation journey. Again, it doesn't have to be me, but get the help you need. Do I think that this is going to be amazing? Yes, I absolutely do. But I want to just let you all know what it is. So September 18th. Hi, Melanie. So September 18th, which is next Monday, is going to be the launch of the Tax Pro Representation Journey. Now, you don't see graphics and stuff because I may change the name just looking at some things playing with it here. Um, with this, it is going to be a community accountability, but you are going to also have the opportunity to work with me. And this is how it'll work. So each Monday, I haven't decided the time yet, but it's going to either be early in the morning. So around midnight before, like as the day is starting or before seven Eastern, you are going to receive a podcast. Now, the podcast isn't going to be forever long. It's not going to be like these live streams where you got to listen for an hour. It's going to be 10 to 15 minutes. And what I'm going to be sharing with you are different things that I've encountered as an enrolled agent. All right. But not just me. I'm going to also share some stories that some of my tax sisters, some of my tax brothers have encountered as well. And the steps that were taken to overcome that challenge. Now, I was telling somebody yesterday, I was telling some people just within the past 12 months, honestly, when I became an enrolled agent, um, I am young. I was young, right? I wasn't in my 30s yet. And I had a mentor to help me with marketing. I had mentors to help me with the technical work. I had community that was married. I had community that was parents, but I didn't have anybody that looked like me going the same path as me that was ahead of me. If that makes sense. Not in a mentor role. So let me go back. So I did have people who, you know, other fellow EAs, but going back a little bit. So I was going the traditional route to become a CPA. So I went to college, best college in the area, hands down for accounting, Bellarmine University, um, did my 70, 80 hour weeks in the industry during tax season. And I had this umbrella, this privilege, right, to grow up in that accounting firm and to be able to ask all of my stupid questions um, in the privacy of an office versus on the internet learned how to do different tax research and everything. So when I left the firm and became an enrolled agent, it was different. 
you know, I was on my own as an entrepreneur, so I didn't have those weekly or monthly check-ins with a buddy. Um, I didn't have the built-in mentorship, and that is something that was missing for me. So there are definitely some uh, hiccups, <laughs> some roadblocks and bumps that I ran into, and part of what I'm doing with this podcast, I am giving fellow EAs and those pursuing the EA um, license what I didn't have. So not every week, but there are going to be weeks where the podcast may be the 15 to 18 minute zone because I'm going to give you a case study. I'm going to talk about things like your mindset because you do have to remember who you are. You have to remember that power that I told you about earlier today, right? The power that we hold with the EA license. But then you need to know when you get on the phone with the IRS, what are you supposed to say if you don't have that buddy or mentor to reach out to? When you get a new client, you shouldn't automatically look to see if they qualify for an offer and compromise. I've had professionals reach out to me and they've done the 656 and all the paperwork and that taxpayer did not qualify for it, offer and compromise at all. However, I couldn't fault them or be upset because they didn't have anybody to reach out to to tell them like, hey, you should actually take a look at the client's financials and walk them through this process first. And actually at the end of that process, it kind of spits out what they qualify for. They would have saved a lot of time and headache because they were stressed out doing all that paperwork only to find out that the client didn't actually qualify for an offer and compromise. And really they had to start all over again with the paperwork. So each week I'm giving you insight into those things. And as I've mentioned accountability, at the end of each episode, there are gonna be two to three. I know y'all are grown, but, but in order to grow, we have to have home week. All right, because I don't believe that you should pay for anything, join any community and be stagnant, right? There should always be growth. And as an enrolled agent, you will never, ever, ever arrive. There's always something new that you can learn because the tax law is ever evolving. There's always a territory of tax representation that you haven't tapped into, whether that's looking at something currently not collectible, you're doing payroll. So I'm always going to be giving insight into those things. Now that's going to be on Mondays. On Wednesdays, it's going to be a little bit different because you all know I'm a writer. So on Wednesdays, you're going to actually be getting an article, which is going to be the same theme for each week, but it's going to break down those steps that you can implement even more. But here's the thing that's really cool. We're not going to be focused on LinkedIn. We're not going to be focused on Facebook. Where you sign up, there is actually a space for us to talk with each other as a community. So I am going to be on your heads <laughs> to make sure that you are actually implementing the steps that I've given you for that week. Within that space, even if you're new, I'm going to be pushing you guys to reach out to put yourself out there as a new enrolled agent. We have a tax extension deadline coming up. More letters and notices are going out. As you are getting new clients and onboarding them, you have the opportunity and access to me within that community to ask for case support help. All right. But we're launching next Monday, September 18th. And I have some bonuses for my people who sign up. So if you don't know already, September 18th is going to actually be my 34th birthday. And as I said earlier, I told my husband, I was like, I have not been this excited about a birthday since I turned 21. So that was 13 years ago. So I'm really looking forward to this. What can I do to spice it up for my first 34 people that join? And I will tell you, like I said, People start signing up last week before I could even announce what the bonuses were. I just mentioned bonuses. I don't know if that put fire under them or they just wanted to sign up. But people start signing up last week. 
Um, I had somebody sign up yesterday. So if you don't have to wait until next Monday to sign up, I would go ahead and sign up. Let me see, make sure I'm not missing comments. Hey, Melanie, thanks for joining. Dorothy said, losing Miss Eva last month left a big hole in my tribe. Oh, yes. So for those of you that don't know or didn't use her material, even Rosenberg, uh, a.k.a. the tax mama, she did pass away last month. And yes, she did have a very big community. So my condolences to you on that, Dorothy. I did not realize you were part of that community. Um, what was I saying? Sorry, bonuses. So for my first 34 people that do sign up for the tax pros representation journey, um, the first thing, and I've been told that I'm a little crazy for this one. What I'm going to do, those first 34 people, when Monday hits, since it's my birthday, I'm technically not supposed to be working. I will probably go back in on Tuesday, unless I hit 34 before Monday. But I'll go back in on Tuesday and send you an invite that is going to be to book a call with me. So if you are one of the first 34 people, you are actually going to have the opportunity to have a 20 minute one on one phone call with me. Now, during this phone call, you are able to ask me whatever you want to. But let me share with you my intention for the phone call. While we're together in this first month. I think it's very important that you have a roadmap of where you were going. So I don't want to give away the first episode, but the first month we're going to be working on creating that roadmap of where do you want to be as an EA? Not how much money that you want to make. Yes, that's important, but we want to take a look at, okay, you're representing people. Let's narrow that down a little bit. All right. Now money is involved. It is involved, right? But ideally, this call would be booked after the first or second um, week because you're going to need that material, right, to do your roadmap. And I'm going to walk you through it. I'll even give you a sample. And that's the thing, too. Anything that I'm asking you to do is going to be something that I've done. It's going to be something that I can provide you with an example of. But first 34 people, they're going to get this 20 minute phone call with me to go over their roadmap. Now, the way I'm going to do it, um, you can share that roadmap with me in advance. I'm going to give you my input on it. I'm going to give you suggestions on where maybe I had the same thing on my roadmap and I reached that. Maybe I didn't reach it, but maybe there are some spots in there where you may need to pivot or do something else before some of the goals that you have set on your roadmap. All right. So that's bonus number one. And that, yes, is 34 people. Now, the link to book that call is going to expire 45 days after the 18th. So you all want to make sure that you, once you get that link, you go in and book the call. If you're like, oh, 20 minute call to ask whatever is not really a big deal. I encourage you to go to America's Favorite EA.com and see how much it costs to talk to me for an hour getting that for free is definitely a big deal but not only that because I know that a lot of you all are new and maybe your license isn't new but you're new to doing the representation part because we have so many notices that are going to be coming out after this extension deadline we have one this Friday and we have the individual extensions um, due next month I want you to go in here with full confidence that you know how to handle a tax representation case. Now, there will be things that get thrown at you that you're like, what in the world? And that's why you have the community to write in, right, for support. But I'm going to do a live class for my first 34 people that sign up. And in this live class, it is an abridged version of the back tax negotiation workshop, right? So instead of the full three hours, it is going to be 90 minutes. It is going to be live, but I'm going to walk you through onboarding a client, what doing the financials look like, 
before you actually fax that over to the IRS. So you're going to see an example of an engagement letter that I use. You're going to see an example of a transcript and what the different things actually mean on it. And you are going to see an example of a completed 433F that was actually accepted by the IRS and know the type of documents that had to go with that. So again, for my people that sign up before, there's a serious lag on LinkedIn, before my people, uh, shoot, I'm sorry. For my first 34 people that sign up, those are gonna be the two bonuses. So we have the one-on-one -on -one call for 20 minutes to go over the roadmap. You get my input on it. If you wanna say, hey, I don't wanna talk about my roadmap, I just want to talk to you for 20 minutes. That's cool too. It's your prerogative. That's your 20 minutes, right? If you have a case and you want to talk about that for 20 minutes, that's even more exciting. We can do that, right? The next thing will be the live class to help you be prepared and walk you through the process of onboarding the client, looking at the transcript and preparing those financials so you can see what a client would actually qualify for when you run them through the financials. All right. So I don't see any comments on Facebook or LinkedIn. Let me check my inbox since you all like to be there today. Facebook message. I don't have a community yet. LinkedIn message says the same thing. Well, look, if you don't have a community yet, come on, join us. Join us over at the Tax Pros Representation Journey. Um, let me see. I do not have the link up right now. What I will do, I'll come back and post it in the comments. Does anybody have any questions for me before I go? Let me see. LinkedIn is showing 20 minutes behind. That can't be right. Well, if I do not have any questions, I'm going to love you all and leave you. Um, feel free to shoot me a message if you have any questions that pop up for you. But I would also encourage you to please, please, please put them in the comments because if you have a question, then somebody else probably has the same question and I can just put that answer in there once. All righty then, will you all enjoy the rest of your Tuesday and I will be talking with you soon. Bye.